So once we understand that there's DNA for people, there's DNA for business, and there's DNA for life, it's how to convert prospects to clients by understanding how they like to communicate, the path to communication, and helping them understand a system and a pattern. Once we've identified them and how to track them and how to deliver a message, the next thing we have to do is understand how the natural laws work. Why is that? There's over 250 natural laws that have been identified and these are the things that tie the DNA of people and the DNA of business together. They govern every area of life, and those who know and follow them will succeed and have wealth, and those who don't, won't. So to do that is Emily, come on up, and help us understand how that's going to help you. And I think, I think I need to okay. turn this light off so we can see the screen. Okay. Okay, you can start. Okay, so, so some statistics that came across this morning from Hypedrive, which is a customer relationship management system, talked about how 43% of companies think that sales representatives need to improve their ability to prioritize accounts to focus selling efforts. 55% of companies think the sales reps need to improve their ability to incubate promising leads for the future. After a sales call, 57% of prospects thought that the caller had a clear understanding of their need, which of course means that 43% didn't think the caller had a clear understanding of their needs. Sales people who contacted prospects within an hour of receiving a query were 60 times more likely to qualify the lead as those who waited 24 hours or longer to contact the prospect. 80% of sales requires five follow-up calls after a meeting. 44% of the salespeople give up after one follow-up. Only 46% of sales reps feel their pipeline is accurate. The accuracy of the deals in your pipeline directly relate to how steady and dependable your revenue will be. 57% of people said they would be encouraged to make a purchase from a salesperson who didn't try to apply pressure or hassle them to follow up. 42% of people would be encouraged to make a purchase if the sales rep called back at an agreed upon specified time. So um, I talked to Mark yesterday about how to convert prospects more quickly to, to leads to prospects. And he said, where's our 530 grid again? Thanks. Excellent. So he said, you know, first we start with uh, better leads, we have a better message, we do better tracking, we ask better questions, we understand the personalities to improve communication, we present solutions based on data, we study the losses, like the Army uh, casualty principle, where we understand why they buy and why they don't. We feed successes back into the system with testimonials, and we improve, we improve our prospects through referrals. But then he said, we use our driver energy to determine how to make the biggest impact in the shortest time with the least effort. Now, I'm a boomer, which means I'm older than dirt, as referenced by Mark this morning. So I guess I like to tell stories. <laughs> You've all heard me tell my fishing stories. Um, after the last with Minnesota vacation, um, there was a little inheritance left, and my sister, the amiable, decided to take her inheritance and, and buy a resort. And so, the first picture, I'm sorry, maybe if we turn that off we can see this a little better. This is the earliest known picture of her resort on Colon Lake in Michigan. It was built in the 30s, um, just a nice little fishing camp. These are all river rocks. The whole camp is built stone walls. When she bought it 15 years ago, there were holes in the roof. There were five dumpsters of garbage that they pulled out of this facility. I saw the property and in my analytic mind went, oh my gosh, 
how can this possibly ever be anything? She's an amiable, though, and she wanted to create a space to bring people together to create that great feeling that we'd had on our Minnesota vacation so many years. So she leveraged her relationships. She had a friend who's an architect. He had a friend who's a teacher that had the summer off. The teacher pulled all the garbage out. They got rid of that. They rebuilt the uh, entire place. They brought the friends in to do painting. This is what it looks like now. They decided when they brought the place back to life to call it the retreat at Miller's Landing. Miller's Landing was the original name. They wanted to create a, a, a place uh, that they could have um, groups come together to communicate, to do counseling sessions, to do um, um, leadership retreats. What's actually happened, though, is over time, families who vacation here in the 30s, 40s, and 50s now have second and third generation people coming back to vacation like they had with their parents and their grandparents at the same lake, at the same <laughs> location. And so using testimonials and referrals from previous vacations has brought new life to their retreat and their resort, um, having uh, relationships that they built in the community to be on the historic walk and bring people through and, and collect stories, again, about what it was like in the old days and why people liked to come here. They, they don't have to, um, they don't have to advertise for clients. They're full all summer long with people with repeat, uh, repeat guests. They've created clients for life. So that, that having the vision, leveraging uh, referrals, using testimonials from people, understanding uh, the personalities to draw people in and, and use the, the driver energy to make the biggest impact in the shortest time with the least effort and never giving up. And you can turn a pile of rocks into a, a beautiful vacation place. So what's one takeaway you can have from what Emily has shared? That's my goal. Okay. <laughs> really? So, so a resort turning a resort? Yep. Okay. So if you even if you didn't want a resort, what's a takeaway that you could because that's awesome. I mean that's beautiful, right? But there was something that she said. Did you catch it? About her sister being unamiable? Well, not that, but it's toward the end. She was talking about what was happening. Did anybody catch that and how you can do the same thing? Uh, generational business. Generational business. Right. Testimonials. Testimonials, which in turn means that they weren't digging into this for cash to try and advertise. What were they doing? They were going back to the people that were already clients, right? They were going back to the people that were already clients, and they started talking to them. All the families over years and years and years and years and years, and they don't have to advertise. And they're just coming back. Will they be coming back next year, maybe? Oh, yeah. Next year. How about the year after that? Probably. The year after that. And it builds on each other. The generation after that. Generation after that. So if, I mean, look, everybody, nobody, nobody leaves this planet alive. I mean, there was a couple of recording ones, but I mean, you know, <laughs> death is inevitable. But this is about leaving a legacy, right? How are you leaving a legacy in your business? How are you taking your clients and the people that Emily said, that was wonderful. Thank you um, to that. How can you do the same thing to create something that keeps generating with or without you? 